Well, Goody, great to be catching up. Thanks for your time. Uh, a little over a week since Melbourne's season finished. Uh, how are you looking at it a week on? Oh, still probably obviously hurting and disappointed. Um, obviously a week on, but um, we wanted to be out, put ourselves in a position where we had the opportunity to play finals. Unfortunately, we weren't capable of, of stepping up at the right time and being able to do that. But I guess over the last week, as time's gone on, it, you know, it's given me a chance to really reflect on where we're at and how we're tracking. And um, you know, we've gone flat out into reviews now about how we're getting better. So um, obviously very hurt and disappointed by how it all finished, but at the same time got great optimism for a pathway forward. Why do you think Melbourne didn't make the finals in the end? Well, there's a host of reasons, and they're the things that we're reviewing now. Um, where do we have to get better and how are we going to go about getting ourselves in position to play finals and that's ultimately the challenge of our football club now. Um, we've come from a safe bubble where there's no expectations of footy club. Now we actually have expectation of winning which I think is a great position for this footy club to be in. Now the challenge for us is to develop a winning culture and when I say a winning culture it's about um, winning more often than we don't. Um, winning when we're expected to win. Um, not having the inconsistencies in the way we play and that's really about developing a winning culture and that can take some time but um, it's something that we're all up for the challenge for. What was the weekend like? Uh, Melbourne obviously lost to Collingwood on the Saturday, a really disappointing performance and then you had to wait until the Sunday with the West Coast Adelaide game which obviously didn't turn in Melbourne's favour. Yeah, obviously there's an incredible amount of frustration on Saturday post game. Um, to, to be in a position where your destiny is in your own hands and to come out and try and play the, the way that you want to play. But clearly we were way off the mark early in the game. You know, at quarter time, um, you know, we were five or six goals down, um, which was, was dis really disappointing. And I can imagine the frustration the supporters had. We as a footy club had a similar frustration and that's really where we've got to improve as a footy club is to be able to get rid of those inconsistencies in the game and when we develop a really, really good footy team, those inconsistencies will disappear. So the frustration at quarter time was evident from everyone, um, players, supporters, you know, coaches, the alike. So um, that's what we've got to keep working on. And that really impacted on our ability to win the game. Um, so we left Saturday night obviously very frustrated and then Sunday was just pure agony, really, to sit back and um, watch what transpired and knowing that you had control of it on the Saturday was something that was really disappointing. The first quarter against Collingwood obviously attracted a lot of criticism. Uh, the boys were pretty slow to start, uh, played catch-up football from that point. What do you attribute that to? Look, we just had a poor quarter of footy. You know, two weeks earlier, um, we played St Kilda in a game that was going to define our finals campaign at that point. Um, we come out and we kicked six goals to one. So... Um, you know, for three weeks in a row we had to had a very similar preparation and a very similar build up around how we wanted to play, the way we wanted to start the game. We were able to execute that in two of those games but the last game um, Collingwood came out and, and played the way that they needed to play and, and we were left a long way short and uh, didn't reflect anything that we were about. You're really strong on saying where Melbourne would be at the end of round 23 but there was a lot of expectation around that and supporters uh, felt that finals were on the horizon. Um, how did you deal with all that expectation in the end? Uh, in a lot of ways, we wanted that expectation. We wanted that opportunity to be in a position um, to play finals. And I guess that comes with coming off no expectation as a footy club. Uh, we've now generated some expectation to win with our supporters, with the media, and um, with ourselves. And that's a, that's a great thing. Um, in saying that, you know, I was really conscious that it is a long year. Um, for a playing group to sustain uh, a brand of footy that we're trying to generate with our team. And I think from about round 15, I could see us really starting to, to struggle in some key uh, areas of our game style that we've been working on really strongly. And, um, and that's why I think our inconsistencies grew in the last six or seven weeks. The fans are really hurting after the loss last weekend. How do you deal with their expectation? Oh, I understand the frustration of our supporters. It's been a long time since this club's um, had some success and it's been a long time since they've had the ability to play finals. Um, I can understand their impatience towards that. Um, I'm an impatient person naturally. I want to get there as quick as I can. But I've also got great perspective of what we're trying to actually build as a club and um, we've still got some work to do in building those habits 
um, and behaviours around creating the success that this club wants and um, that can take some time. Um, but I'm also really optimistic in the fact that we're one of only two clubs that have had lineal improvement in the last four years. Every club's gone backwards at some point. So we are tracking in the right direction and I understand there's a level of impatience around that. Um, but I'm really optimistic because I think where we sit right here today, we're going to dig even deeper around how we can improve, what we need to change, how we're going to continue to build our environment, and that's going to make this club even stronger in the long term. Do you think a season like this actually might benefit in the long run because you didn't get there and you've had to go through a fair bit of uh, heartbreak from this season? All I'm really interested in is um, building a, a club and a playing group um, that's capable of having success consistently. And the ladder doesn't lie. We finish where we finished. Um, and what the ladder indicated is we're not good enough yet. So we've got to keep pursuing how we get better and how we build a strong footy club. And we can't take our eyes off that. Making the finals is one thing. We need to be really clear on that. Being successful in finals is another. Um, and what we're about is building a team that's going to be successful in finals. So, um, you know, whether you get there or not, is, is one thing, um, but when you get there it's how you play. Since you found out you wouldn't be playing finals, what was the initial response from the players and what have they been like since, almost a week on? Oh, look, they were a shattered group, there's no doubt about that. They invested a lot of energy um, into having a really strong season and um, you know, ultimately they wanted to try and create their own little bit of history and play some finals for the footy club. Um, so they were awfully disappointed with how it ended. Um, you know, I sit here um, really honestly and, and talk about that, but they also want to use it to really push themselves further in the years ahead. This group will learn a hell of a lot from that experience. What are you up to in the next few weeks? You, you've obviously got a break now. You've worked incredibly hard in your first year as senior coach. Um, what, what does the next few weeks look like for you? Yeah, look, it's been a, it's been a terrific year, but um, you know, I'll work all the way through until you know, the 12th of October. Um, and then I'll head overseas for a bit of a study trip um, you know, with my wife and have a bit of a break at the same time. So um, you know, a great opportunity to reflect on the year, but also a great opportunity to get into my own headspace and really generate some new ideas and some innovation and, and bring some things back from, from the US that uh, might be applicable to our game and, and try and learn and grow and get better. Goody, it's been fantastic to catch up. Thanks very much for your time. Uh, it's been great to hear your honest thoughts about Melbourne's 2017 season and uh, all the best for the off-season and for 2018. Thanks very much for joining us. Yeah, thanks, Bergs, and I uh, just want to thank everyone for their support. You know, I know the players have really enjoyed it and um, love the passion and the intensity of their support and uh, look forward to a, a bigger and better 2018.